Hello! In this video, we're going to look at all the concepts related to how different processes are either being allowed or denied to access certain objects. We're going to talk about tokens associated with shred and processes, as well as security descriptors associated with objects, and all the access control list and privileges around this concept. Okay, let's get started. In general, most permissions on Windows are based around security properties associated with tokens and objects security descriptors. And so each thread has a default token that dictates what it can do or not do on the system. And each object on the system has an associated default security descriptor that dictates the type of action that can be done by other threads on that particular object. And so typically a thread that creates particular objects will be able to manipulate these objects, but won't be able to access certain objects that are created by other threads. And so the component that is responsible to check that threads only access the objects that they are allowed to access is called the security reference monitor. Typically the access check will happen when calling functions like create process, create file that are called when you try to open a specific object before you can do anything with it. And so the access check is done at that time. And so now we're going to detail a bit more tokens owned by threads and security descriptors associated with objects. WinBag includes the bang token command that can be used to analyze token properties associated with your current thread. We can see the token holds information on the user and group associated with the process. And we'll see later that the information is stored in what we call a security identifier. And it is of the format S dash. So for instance, here we have S dash. 1-5-32-544 for the actual user group and we have s-1-5-18 for the user and you can see on top of that that there are some privileges that give you the ability to create new tokens assign tokens to other processes and so on basically all the token is is a kernel structure the same as everything else in the kernel and it is managed by the object manager and so here the token kernel structure will be associated with the e-process which address ends with 701c0 as you can see at the very top of the output and the token structure just defines a bunch of privileges that processes can have so you can see that a bunch of it is actually slipped in the output but there are like 36 different special privileges that a token can sort of have in the current Windows 10 version I am analyzing. And so the highest privilege token is usually what we call the system token. And generally a system level token either has all of these permissions or it has a special permission that says it can adjust token privileges. So even if you, your token doesn't say that you can maybe debug another process, if you have the privilege that says you can add your own privileges, which system token typically will, then it is just kind of came over anyway, because you can manipulate your own privileges in order to add whatever you need. And most of the time from an attacker perspective, you don't really care what the privileges are you just want to become system so that you can kind of do what you want, like stealing domain admin credentials or whatever. So the actual underlying VPNs of all of the different privileges and other stuff are not super relevant. And to be honest, there was one point where I knew them in detail, and now it's been so long since I cared that I don't even remember a lot of the details. But that being said, there is a certain scenario where it really matters. Like if you're interested in user and bugs that someone like James for show from Project Zero abuses, a lot of it has to do with the nuances of tokens and specific edge cases. But again, it's like what I uh, have already said in this course, which is like a lot of the time, unless you know for sure you're gonna have to deal with it, it's not necessarily worth spending all the time try to memorize all the token stuff or anything like that. In general, you can use a tool like Process Explorer, 
and you can just see the token information from user led as well which just goes back to what we said already that a lot of what you see in userland is just like a shadow of the canal structures exposed to userland and so here we are looking at the system process like Elsass, and we can see its security identifier is s-1-5-18 and we see all the privileges it has similarly to what we saw previously in Wingback, but this time we see it from userland and so if we take again the e-process object we saw earlier that ends with 71c0 we know there is an object header structure before the actual e-process structure which is kind of why we subtract the 30 hex bytes and then we print the security descriptor field which is a pointer and we see it ends with the hex 06724 bytes in this case, we can ignore the lower three bits on the shown value to get the actual security descriptor pointer. And so the pointer actually starts with hex 720 instead of 724. And so we can use the bang sd command to show the contents of the security descriptor associated with that object. It basically contains the owner security ID and group security ID that dictate who owes that actual object and a series of access controls that give additional permissions. And so the access control list is known as ACL and it contains what we call access control entries known as ACE. And we said previously that the security descriptor contained the other security ID and group security ID. And so you can imagine that each access control entry also contains a security ID to dictate what other threads or processes can do on that particular object. And it is indicated by an access mask that dictates if the access to the object is allowed or denied. You also have this concept of account level privileges. And so you typically have user privileges and administrator privileges. And so a given process can either be associated with a user or an administrator, and it might be given different privileges based on that account type it is associated with. And so typically it will be able to access certain objects or not, depending on that account. We've just seen that the privileges are stored into the token structure, and the token says if the privileges are enabled or disabled. And so typically, privileges that are useful from an attacker's perspective are the one to debug other processes. So you can actually inspect and adjust the memory of other processes. And you have one to actually create tokens, which obviously is like an admin equivalent privilege, since you can then add your own tokens that gives you whatever you need. I guess one thing worth noticing is a thread can also sort of impersonate another specific token that might not be the same as the one it originally has so that it can just temporarily access certain objects or whatever and again this is a high privilege and this is just a summary of all the privileges that were available when we did this course but your mileage may vary because microsoft actually add new privileges over time 